cry, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. They would be arrested today, wouldn't they? You think Tiger Mom was bad. Whoa, right, okay. It doesn't matter if I'm talking about giving great customer service, working with the generations, or personal branding. My core theme always centers around respect, trust, and value. We call you the can-do kids because you believe you can do anything. You are the most optimistic of all the generations, and that's really good. I just read an article that 37% of you are either unemployed or underemployed. 37% of you are waiting tables right now, or you're not working, but you're not even worried. You're not worried. You're optimistic. You're sure next year you're going to make 15 to 90K. You're living with your mom and dad. They're a little worried about it, right? But you're not worried about it at all. We had commercials. We had commercials. A frying pan comes on the screen. Two eggs. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. We are sorry. Halloween. Oh my goodness. Don't eat that candy. The neighbor could have put razor blades in your milk duds. We're sorry. We love work. And we love talking about work. And we love telling you how much we work. Sometimes we're tired. Women, women, come on. How many of you, oh my goodness, you walk in. I am exhausted. I have worked all weekend. Now you're telling this to a Gen X that they are not listening. They do not. You know what they think? Well, why? Why? So today when I speak with you, I'm going to talk a lot about branding. And I want you in your minds to divide it into two segments. The hotel you're working for right now, your company brand, and your personal brand. Because here's the deal. Everyone that was up here talked about, I've been to the Hilton, I've been here, I've been there. And guess what the one constant is with all the travels that these guys have done? They brought themselves with them to each job. So as you navigate through hotels through the rest of your life, or however long you're going to do this, you're going to be bringing you with you. And you have a brand. And so today I'm going to talk about your brand and developing your brand and hoping that with each hotel that you go to, your brand is in sync with that company brand, okay? Your brand is your promise. Your hotel is making a promise to us. It's promising a certain level of service, and that's what we expect. So what makes you different from all the other people that they've hired? What is it about you that makes you different? This is not something that you're going to go, oh yeah, I know what it is, like when you leave here today. This is something that you begin to think about, and it's a process. We want to know your point of view. People say, who, who, who reads blogs? People read blogs. People look at YouTube. Here's what I'm learning. Maybe a 50-year-old is having the meeting, but their assistant's in their 20s, and when they're looking for a speaker, guess where they're looking? They're looking on YouTube. And they're picking their speakers, they're picking their clients, they're picking the next big employee through social media. And it really is the way to go. I tell people the train has left the station. Get on it, because it's not going back. Yeah, lots, lots of changes happening, lots of different ways of communicating. I ask the audience, so what's your favorite way to communicate? Is your favorite way to communicate face to face? How many say face-to-face? -face? Yeah, we love face-to-face -face because we can actually see your expression. How about email? We just read where college kids aren't emailing anymore. Technology is giving us and showing us a new way to engage. A new way to engage. So I'm going to ask this question. I, I asked them to keep the house lights up so I could look. How many people in here are on Facebook? Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm so impressed. Look around. That is unbelievable. I'm a baby boomer. I had retail stores, four of them, lots of customers. And when I decided to become a speaker, I thought it would be instant success. Very Gen Y attitude. I thought that I would speak once and that was going to be it, you know? They were going to just fill the house and tell their friends. But this didn't happen that way. So I had to join an association. I joined the National Speakers Association. When I joined that association, it changed my life because I saw mentors and, and role models up here. You see, you are the mentors and the role models. People are looking at you in your association. And I saw great speakers, and I realized I had a long way to go, right? So I started speaking, and I started really practicing. And one night, I was at the Westin Gallery in Houston, Texas, big hotel. And in the audience was a young Gen Y. 
At the time, I didn't even know he was a Gen Y. I just knew he was really young. He came from stand-up comedy, and he was a speaker. He was very successful at a very young age, and he heard me speak. And when I was done, he came up to me and he said, "You've got talent. I'd like to be your coach." <laughs> I don't know about that. I looked at this kid and I thought, "Me?" And then re I realized something. He knew something I didn't know. He had a talent I didn't have. He could teach me something. He said, "Come on over to my house. My wife and I will have you over for dinner." So I went to his house with a notebook and pens and paper. And he kind of laughed when he saw that. And he goes, "We're not going to do it that way." And I had to learn that the way he was going to teach me was going to be different. But I was going to learn something, and he did teach me well. He taught me about interaction and getting the audience involved. And it's not the Karen show, he said; it's your show. And he taught me that we have to, as speakers today, give more, be more, and do more. And I started working on it. It was tough because in the beginning it's all about you, right? And I started working on it, and our friendship really, really grew. And one night, true story, I was in Austin, and my cell phone rings. It's late at night. It's him. I answer the phone, hello, and he goes, Karen. I'm in an airport in Vegas. They loved me. I rocked. I rocked. I rocked like a rock and rock star. Oh, my flight's here. I gotta go. And he hangs up. <laughs> he called to tell me how good he was, that he rocked. And I thought, whoa, how weird is that? About two weeks later, I get another call. He's at an airport. I rock. I rock. He starts calling me now at every airport, telling me he rocks. I asked his wife, "Does he call you?" She said, "I don't take his call." Yeah, so he's calling me now, and I'm kind of getting into it. I see, I see that he's there. You know, now I answer the phone. Hey, man, did you rock? I'm getting into it. Yes, I rocked. And now we're getting this relationship going, and he's calling me. It's good. And then one day I wake up and I go, sick of him rocking. I want to rock. I'm not rocking. What's going on? If you're not rocking, it's time to reinvent. If you're not getting what you want out of life, you got to look at yourself. You can't look at everybody else. You look deep, and I looked within myself, and I needed a topic. The generations. I had to get something I was passionate about, and I landed something I love. Everything changed. I was in Minneapolis, Minnesota, doing a hardware convention. They're hard, <laughs> hardware people. They loved me. It was awesome. They were like hooting and hollering, waving their napkins. I couldn't wait to call them. I got to the airport to call my friend, but his number wasn't in my phone. But my sister Patty, she's here today. She brought her in. She's gonna help me. My sister Patty, I called her. Patty, I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I just did a group of hardware people, and I rocked. I rocked. I rocked like a rock and rock star. And she goes, "Ooh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Have you been at the bar?" <laughs> and we hung up the phone. And here's the deal. Sometimes we're afraid to tell people when we rock. Sometimes we're afraid to hear when people rock because, man, if you rock, did you get all the rock and there's no rock left for me? You know, did you get a raise? You got the last dime this company's got. You know, oh my goodness, you're getting married. Well, I know you got the last good man. There's no one left for me, right? We come from a place. Sometimes we come from a place where there just isn't enough. And here's what I know. I know this because I believe it. I'm out there. Spread the word. Tell people when you do great because there is enough rock for all of us. Thank you guys for having me. Have a great conference. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Woo! You rock. Thank you.